All right, Spider. Um, we uh, had you a couple years ago, back when we were pretty much audio only. Um, so now that we stepped up, I had to reach back out and get you. So I appreciate you coming on the channel and, and being with us today. Easy call, Big John. That for those that don't know, the person interviewing me is not a stranger to me. Um, I've been knowing him for uh, almost a couple decades, if not 20 years. Um, my very first presence on the internet was provided by John. I want to thank you for that. He was the person that ran the entire death row website. And if you can recall back then, websites were not just something everybody had. So it was something more affiliated with a major label. It was a hell of a responsibility. And as an artist affiliated with the label, he had a design where all the artists would have their own section. If you were a death row fan, you could come to the row uh, website and then it was almost like each artist had their mini own website built in it where they have their own section. So I had a section like that. And then um, as I used to network with John and he helped me build and show me how to work with it and chat and do all my shit, he then um, launched my own website for me on his own, on his mm -hmm. server. Uh, yeah. I knew what GoDaddy.com was so long ago because of this dude. And um, I had spiderlog.com and it was kind of like, I was kind of like at the forefront of rappers being online and being present. Um, highly due to uh, John putting me in the game and lacing me. Can you tell me a little bit about what the beef is with, uh, between you and WAC 100? I know you call him WAC No 100, but um, can you explain to the viewers uh, where you guys kind of, I don't want to say went sideways, but where the animosity started between the two of you? That's a good way to say it, went sideways, where the animosity developed, where, why the um, constant um, candid disrespect spews from my mouth on a consistent basis is because um, I had one on a hiatus as far as making public appearances, rapping, being online, uploading music, anything of that nature. I had one on a hiatus for about seven years. And upon my return to the scene, I stumbled across a, a story that Wacko No Hunted was telling on the internet about an incident where he placed me there that I never intended. He fabricated this whole conversation between he and I, which caused him to appear dominant in the conversation, a conversation that no one that actually knows me but would believe I would tolerate, especially at that point in my life. He was so uh, ridiculous as to insinuate I had ill intentions toward Doja, AKA Game, JC Yon Taylor, the rapper, ex stripper. And according to Wacko No Hunted, I physically intended to do harm to Doja. And I had him surrounded in a parking lot, apparently, while he was leaning against his car. I wasn't alone. Apparently, I was alongside Mob Deep, 40 Glock, and a slew of other people. And according to Wacko No Hunted, Doja called him petrified, scared. And I believe Wacko No Hunter said people had been spitting upon his vehicle, meaning Doja's vehicle, and he calls uh, Wacko No Hunter for assistance. Imagine that. A guy from Compton calling Wacko No Hunter because he needs help. But according to Wacko No Hunter, wherever he was, he was alongside Suge Knight. And when he gets the phone call, 911 SOS, Doja in distress, he tells Suge, hey, we need to go check on the homie. And according to Wack, Suge told him, man, fuck that. I don't give a fuck about that. And once again, according to Wack, he kind of bullied Suge and or he decided because of his influence that they were going to go check on Doja, even though Suge didn't want to. So somehow in this universe in Wack's head, uh, I was standing there all this time waiting for him to come and show up. I never did nothing to Doja. And, we, I would, and it was just a fake story where he came and told me about his opinion of G-Unit Crips and how unauthentic they were to him personally and said something about 50 Cent, putting batteries in my back. And he claims to have had this conversation with me in person. And I do declare it never, ever, ever took place. So once I saw that, I became very comfortable being honest about him since he was dishonest about me. So I'm, I've always known that his character was not one of honor. However, I didn't feel like it was my business to be exposing him. He was a constituent, an associate, someone I was familiar with, and it was an industry affiliation. And if you uh, don't realize it, the industry is compiled of weirdos. It's full of weirdos. So he fits 
right in. However, once I saw that he was comfortable lying on me, um, I became comfortable being honest about him. With his current situation with the 60s, do you feel like um, there will be any repercussions for him, you know, as far as what's going on? I would. I mean, he might be a sly fox, you know? And uh, I hope no harm comes to that dude or to anyone. I hate the fact that that type of energy is being acted out in real time online. I think that's uh, dangerous in more than one way. So, um, I don't want to speculate. I think everybody in the world, if they had to bet, would probably bet on the same side of the issue. But who knows? I don't know, man. Um, really, I want to say to the homies, to the six O's, stand down, cuz, with this nigga baiting niggas into goofy situations, cuz. Every move he make, he on the internet, giving it play by play. And when violence, potential violence, is a, a part of the scenario, you got to be careful how you go about broadcasting, you know, the events. Everybody watching is being recorded, everybody listening, especially them people. Okay. Um, how did you originally meet WAC 100? Was it through the row days or was it uh, after that? No, it was at the row. I met him at the row by way of uh, Pooh Rod, rest in peace, who was a stump down um, official reputable G, well known, throughout uh, the L.A. County area, Compton, his name rang bells. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was incarcerated with Should, and they developed a bond as to where he was invited to come fuck with Suge at the road when he got out. And being at that, um, Wack was probably one of his homies that had a little change. I believe that when he went to go fuck with Suge, that's the vehicle he utilized to get there. Yo, whack, take me up here to go fuck with shit. I believe it was something to that effect. I could be slightly off with the details, but that's when I that's when I met him at that time. Yes.